Hello and welcome to Inside EVs. You join us back where we left you off with the Mustang Mach-E just a few weeks ago where we went on a tour of the outside and the inside of the brand new all-electric Mustang Mach-E. If you haven't seen that video yet, click the pop-out banner here. If you don't see a banner here, there is a link in the description of this video where you can go back and join us on the tour. Today is the day I can finally tell you everything about the car and we are gonna go on our first drive together. We're gonna talk about our impressions how the car feels on the road, the driver assistance, and so much more. So we're gonna try out all three driving modes. We're gonna try out the Copilot 360 and a lot. So make sure you're subscribed to Inside EVs as we always like to bring these vehicle reviews directly to you. And let's go for a ride in the Mustang. I can't wait. And now you join us inside the Mustang Mach-E. Again, this is the extended range all-wheel drive first edition. So 270 miles EPA rated, uh, zero to 60 in uh, four or five second range. I forget exactly, but pretty quick. We'll talk about that as well. We're gonna set our lights to automatic and we're going on a trip over from Detroit to Ann Arbor. Now, of course, the video is not gonna last the whole time, but what we're gonna be able to test is inner city driving. We're literally in downtown Detroit and we're gonna jump on the highway and see how it drives and of course test the driver assistance. So we're going to go to an Electrify America station in Ypsilanti, not from Michigan, you can tell me I pronounced that wrong, uh, 2539. So I'm just entering in the destination right here into the car and it's Ellsworth Road, E-L-L-S, Worth Road. Okay, and it, here we go, just pops up, didn't even have to finish it. So we're just going to select that right here. It says, is this how you want to go? It gives me three different route options, which is cool. So I can select each one. We'll just go with the no traffic, no alerts ones. Hit go. Let's see, we have voices. We have 3D maps here. We have our directions here on the screen. It says total trip time, arrival in 37 minutes, 38 minutes, 37 miles. Uh, let's see if we can see some more info about it. Oh, we can select what we want to display there. And uh, so that's pretty cool. It says our elevation, everything like this. Uh, I, what I want to do is turn off the voice. So we're going to turn off the voice just by clicking that little button that has been there the whole time that I just searched for. It was not needed. It was right on the main screen. Once you find it, though, you're good. So let's try the reversing camera. So I throw it in reverse and I get a 360 view here on the screen. We're going to hit plus and then we can direct a movie with this, which is kind of cool. And then we can zoom out. We can zoom in on this particular corner. That's kind of cool. Uh, we have the 360 cam. We can show just the parking sensors, and then we can get a really wide view of what's around us on the bottom. I like the default uh, setting there. Also, some other cool things that you have with backing up is the lines here are indications as to where you are turning. So if I go straight, you can see the distance indicators. It looks like this little black line would be to line up a trailer hitch, although it's probably just to say, here's the direction of path in the center of the vehicle. So you can get yourself right in the middle of the line. That's really nice. Let's go into drive. So here we are in drive and we're moving for the first time in the Mustang Mach-E together. Now, uh, to go through the drive modes, let's just get the car set up in whisper mode, which is the normal mode, and I'm gonna drive it with one pedal driving off. And then I will tell you about the different modes and the different pedal mappings that you can select. And it's a one-time selection. You can kind of just do this, forget about it, get it set where you want, or you can play around with this constantly. So, here we are in whisper. Let's get out on the road and we'll talk about it. While we're on the way to the road, let's talk low speed noise and pedestrian uh, you know, warnings and also turning radius. So here I've pulled pretty far forwards. We're gonna turn all the way to the right and look at that turning radius. That is impressive for a car of this size. And the nice thing about having electric motors is you don't really have a giant engine in the front that you can't turn the wheels that hard for. So here, for example, we're in a normal parking garage, right? I'm just gonna go and turn all the way to the left and look, we can easily make circles just driving around this parking garage, which is pretty, pretty neat. Yep, no problem. That's awesome. So really great turning radius. I'm definitely impressed with that. The steering in this whisper mode is incredibly light and easy to maneuver. Definitely pleased with that as well. Here we have the, the parking garage security that is passed out dead asleep <laughs> sitting in their car. So on the way down, actually, let's talk about some of the regen modes because we're lowering about 10 levels of parking here. 
Um, right now, the way that I have it set in whisper mode with one pedal drive off in D and drive, the car coasts off power. There's no regen. When I touch the brake pedal a little bit, it blends in the regen and then it will blend friction brakes if I really get on the brake pedal and just at the end that last couple miles per hour. Now if I click L, which is the button on top of the shifter, L will increase the regen uh, with the accelerator pedal. So as I'm building up speed, let's go, I can lift off and you can see the vehicle's actually losing speed now on a pretty steep decline with regen. Then the brake pedal will blend even more regen and then of course the same the friction brakes i can feel it transition very very lightly transition over it's a really nice transition actually something the average user wouldn't know unless you're really paying attention for it now there's another setting for your pedal mapping which is one pedal drive and a little indication comes up on the screen if you watched our walk around video you are already familiar with that one pedal icon and what this will do is it will now adjust the acceleration and braking on the single pedal. So I can come off the pedal, it really slows down and brings us all the way to a stop and then holds the brakes on. So this is truly a one pedal drive. You almost never will need to touch the brake pedal unless you're in an emergency stop situation. And even coming down these sharp, steep, you know, parking garage inclines here, look, I'll bring up the speed to, you know, 18, 19 miles an hour, come off the pedal and we're coming almost to a stop and we will come to a stop in a very short period of time. So that is a really nice setting. I love the aggressiveness of the regen. And even in this mode with one pedal drive at higher speeds, if you really get on the brakes, the car will optimize the regen even more and blend in the physical brakes afterwards. So I think Ford's done a really nice job with this pedal mapping, especially in the whisper setting around town. The pedal's not too twitchy, not too aggressive on pedal tip-in. So it's very easy to modulate the accelerator pedal in tight driving situations like this. Um, you know, the, the thing is a lot of people who are gonna be driving Mustang Mach-E have never driven an electric car before. And getting used to that electric torque can be a little bit unnerving, especially if you have such a powerful vehicle like this. And I would say the whisper mode is a great starter mode, great mode to learn on because it, it it's not a dull accelerator pedal. It's not like uh, driving an, an eco mode or anything like that. Not that this car has that, but it is uh, very much a normal accelerator pedal tuning, something people would be comfortable with. Now you can jump up to the engage setting, which adjusts the steering a little bit, adjusts the throttle tip in, and it makes the car just engaging. Makes it, you know, this is probably how I would choose to drive it every day uh, because it's a really nice balance of, of sporty driving. You get the power there where you want it. And then you also have um, not so much the aggressiveness of the unbridled mode. And that's where you get kind of very aggressive steering. The steering weight moves up. Basically, they just lower the electric assistance in the rack. Um, and the pedal mapping is quite aggressive. And it's what you would expect from a Mustang. So we'll definitely try that out for sure. Let's jump out of the parking garage. Let's see. Exit. Exit. This way, I guess. And... Um, We'll go for a drive out on the streets. Here we are heading out onto the streets of Detroit in engage mode with one pedal drive on. The thing with one pedal drive is the difference between drive and low is gone now. You pretty much just twist it into drive and you get all the regen off the pedal, which is really nice. Um, so you can see here, even though I have my uh, controls set uh, here on this side, I still get my navigation in the main instrument cluster. I can put this away, of course, and then I have my physical maps and I can choose this in 3D mode, north, up, or direction of travel. I'm actually a north, up guy. Uh, I prefer that way. And so here it will automatically zoom in and out based on you know our speed and the technicalness of our move. So now that we have a navigation in, you can see it tells us 38 miles to our destination. It tells us we have 169 miles of projected range, and that's based off of our driving history, but also the route guidance that's inside of the system here, it is projected off of. So here we are making a right turn really good steering nice weighting to it um, the the steering is is probably the standout for me so far just how nicely calibrated it is to the vehicle and um, you can see here hundred percent energy return brake coach I guess that means we regen to the entire stop we didn't use any friction braking there uh, that's a kind of a cool thing I'm sure there's a setting for it you know the number of settings in this car is truly truly insane but Ford's done a really nice job where if you're not 
really a technical person, you don't want to get into the settings, you know, nitty gritty like I do, uh, you can basically just say, hey, here's like the basic stuff that you want to set, and then you go, and that's that's really it. Um, but you can also dive deep and adjust everything. So there's sort of like an expert mode and a beginner mode, and I think that's such a great approach. Um, the seating position in this car is lovely as well. The steering wheel comes down nice and low, the seat sits nice and low, and you really have great visibility out the front. For this car looking like a fastback, the visibility out the rear is pretty amazing. There is a, a small uh, window in the back behind the rear seats that almost eliminates that blind spot, uh, but with a rear passenger there, it, it is covering up time and sitting in the back, our videographer. So there is a blind spot monitoring built into the mirrors, which is great and we'll talk more about that driver assistance as we go so just cruising downtown you got it we're so removed from the outside right it's 43 degrees outside it was just snowing before um, it's cold out there and it was noisy and loud the insulation of sound and the temperature insulation is really nice. You know, we've we've driven quite a few EVs that in the cold weather, you can touch your hand to the door panel. You can feel not only a little bit of air coming through in some cases um, on, on older cars, but even just the doors feeling cold. In this car, I get no sense that that'll be the case because there seems to be just so much insulation in the vehicle all around. So let's get up to speed here. We're in, uh, again, that engaging mode. Let's just put our foot down really quick and feel the first hard acceleration, shall we? <laughs> I'm not going to say the speed, but that was really kind of cool. Uh, <laughs> really great uh, instant acceleration. That's what you get with an electric car, of course. And, you know, this one isn't even the fast one. It's not uh, It's not going to, you know, pull your face out, out. Your eyeballs aren't hitting the back of your head, but it's very quick and uh, you, you, would, you don't need any more. Now, they will have the GT, which is going to be the faster version. And that car is slotted to be one of the fastest electric crossovers, the fastest crossovers in the world, actually. And I'm very much looking forward to testing that out. But I have to say the acceleration on this car is is more more than adequate. Now that we're on the highway, I think a standout for me is not only the noise. We touched on that before. It is extremely quiet in here, but also the ride quality. Uh, and, and I'll show you around some off ramps up here. We'll have an opportunity to really push the car into some corners. But the overall ride over these big harsh bumps is not uh, floaty. It's not uh, you know disconnected. You're not driving an American land yacht here, but it is compliant. And I think part of that has to do with the 19 inch wheels. You know we have a little bit more tire on there, but it is it's very nice. Uh, and, and I would say it's smoother than I had expected coming in to drive the Mustang. Now with that said, I truly believe that they have not compromised on the steering and driving dynamics and overall cornering ability by making this car smooth on the highway. You know, the, the ID4 is certainly smoother, uh, but that car rolls a lot in the corners. This is a little bit more geared toward the sporty side, but it's not gonna beat you up. Uh, and in comparison, you guys know how much I love my Tesla. I always say this, I'm a big Tesla fan, of course, but the ride quality in the Model Y performance. Now, granted, that's gonna compete with the GT of this car, so this isn't the most apples to apples comparison here, but even a dual motor Model Y rides rougher than this car does. Uh, and take it for what you will. Some people will like that, some people won't. Uh, if you're gonna be going to the track very often, perhaps the harder riding suspension will be nice, but also we're not sure how the GT will ride in this uh, version. But I will say the first edition, extended range, all wheel drive has, I would say, the perfect balance of comfort and sport suspension calibration for the use case of this vehicle. So you can see I just got a little chime, even though I have the uh, audio off, it's saying, hey, go on 94 West towards Chicago. And that's great because if you watch any of my road trip videos, you know I miss exits all the time. Uh, so I like that feature and I like that it shows it here on the main screen, tells me what lane I need to be in, but also in the driver instrument cluster here in front of me, which is really great. So we're gonna be exiting to the left here. We have a nice left-hander. I'm gonna select the unbridled mode from the driving setting. So here we are in unbridled. I can feel the steering weight up instantly. The throttle gets sharper. So now let's start pushing it around some of these corners, which is kind of fun. So we can see very little body roll, easily controllable chassis, which is great. Merging onto the power and, and power on oversteer, baby. 
that's pretty great. So even though it's an all-wheel drive car, it is rear bias. So you can see coming out of that corner, I was able to use the accelerator pedal to steer the car, induce a little yaw on the uh, chassis, and we were able to not understeer. A lot of cars are tuned for understeer, especially from Ford. Not this one. This one is, I can't imagine, I want to get one on track one day. This must be in rear wheel drive form, just a drifting machine. Uh, and this is where the soul of Mustang comes in. And as a car enthusiast, this has to live up to the Mustang name. You know, we've been driving a lot of modern Mustangs, uh, not on this channel, but others such as GT500, GT350 with the manual. And they're such a vis visceral experience, you know, compared to even just an EcoBoost Mustang, sort of as the base car. And this car has a lot to live up to. You know, it's, it has such a big badge on it uh, that, that it's got to drive like a Mustang. And on first glance, of course, we're just cruising around Detroit here. At, at least the chassis dynamics team, you can tell they know what they're doing. And if you go back, we also drove this car in a simulator months ago, very early on. And we were able to speak to and interview a lot of the chassis and vehicle dynamics engineers of Mustang Mach-E. And one of their biggest points was this car has to drive like a Mustang first. And that was top priority. And I will say, based off of most other electric crossovers that I have driven, this car handles very, very well. Now, of course, we can't wait to get it to our test facility and rip it around the racetrack as usual, but it, uh, first impressions are great. Now we're back on the highway. We're going to go to whisper mode because we just want to have quiet, comfortable cruising. Now, I don't think this adjusts the suspension in this particular car, but I'm pretty sure this is a fixed damper vehicle. Uh, and I'm going to select the, the uh, settings here. So we're going to turn on cruise control. It's one button there on the bottom. And now what I have is my adaptive cruise control. So I'm going to set us to 60 miles per hour here. We'll merge over into the right lane. So I'm going, I have it set at a set speed. And now, you know, the car will speed up and slow down based on other vehicles around me. So uh, I can adjust the distance here and go from closest to farthest. So there's four settings of distance. We'll keep it on the closest for now. We're in a metro area. You know, it's always good to be close. And now we are going to select the uh, lane keeping system, and that is the bottom right button. And here I've selected it. You can see we get a bubble around the entire car. And it's doing it all by itself, which is kind of great. So, you know, we've driven a lot of vehicles with driver assistance. We've spent tons of time with, with uh, Tesla's autopilot system. And autopilot's great, no question. I love the system. I use it all the time. This seems to have really good lane centering. We uh, drove over here from the airport into downtown earlier today, and the car did everything for us, which was awesome. Now, right now, you have to keep your hands on the wheel. It's a driver monitoring system of torque sensor in the steering rack. But as a software update in the future, if you have the prep package for this, which is an option from the factory, and it comes on all mid to high spec Mustang mach -E's, you get this little bar. And this little bar has two or three infrared sensors in it that are reading where my eyes are looking. And essentially, as long as my eyes are looking at the road ahead, and we are on a pre-mapped highway, and they have uh, almost every major highway pre-mapped, the car will pretty much just drive by itself with my hands off the wheel. Now, of course, it will let me do this now for a couple seconds, and then it says, hey, touch the wheel. You touch the wheel, and it's the torque sensor that knows that you're touching it. One of the highlight standout features for this system for me is how you actually exit this. Now, many new users of Autopilot, and the reason I'm comparing it to Tesla is uh, that's probably the most well-known driver assistance system, but others have the same problem. Uh, when you come out of the system, it really locks you in there. So you have to put a ton of force on the wheel and then it breaks the autopilot system and the car darts on a lane change. And I actually find that to be quite dangerous, especially in Model 3 and Model Y that have uh, really quick steering ratios. Now, as an expert user of the system, I've done probably 70, 80, 90,000 miles on autopilot, likely more. Uh, you get used to it, you know how to handle that system. But for a new driver getting in that vehicle, uh, especially people that are overwhelmed by a lot going on, they end up just turning the wheel, and then I've been in situations where we've been skidding around. This is the opposite. There's no one around me right now. I'm gonna do something I typically don't do. I'm gonna make a lane change without a turn signal. And this is really impressive. You can see I'm in autopilot or uh, Copilot 360 right now, and I'm just gonna make a lane change. Look at that, just popped out of the system. A slight resistance, barely anything, 
Now that I'm back in the other lane, it locks me back in Copilot 360. Now we've seen other uh, systems take a similar approach to this, such as uh, Volvo's Copilot Assist uh, and, and others. So, you know, uh, it's not necessarily unique, but I think a standout feature is this uh, uh, breakaway system. Another interesting feature is I have it on intelligent uh, adaptive cruise control right now. So you can see the speed limit just increased up to 70 miles per hour. I've, set, I've told the car I would like to drive 5 miles per hour over the posted speed limit. So the speed limit just went from 55 to 70 and it has now increased our speed up to 75 miles per hour, which is really nice to have. If we enter a, a inner city zone, we drop to 35, the car will slow down and set our speed at 40 miles per hour in that case. So the driver assistance is a standout feature. The lane keeping is really great. And you know, this isn't full self-driving. This is assistance features on this vehicle, but I would say the implementation of the assistance, the overall usability is extremely simple and it seems to have really, really strong capability as uh, just keeping you locked in the lane, but it's not jerky in any way. So I, I would say I'm pretty impressed with this system. Let's just see what it does here. We're coming up on this car. I'm not touching anything. And it has slowed down even before that car was in the full lane to put some distance in. Now I was covering the brake there just in case, but I didn't have to touch it. And now the car has adjusted for everything. So good, as expected, I would say. Let's move on to some more things. A little more info on the Mustang Mach-E. We have an installed capacity of 99 kilowatt hour. That's the gross capacity of the battery pack. We're only able to use 88 kilowatt hours. So there's an 11 kilowatt hour buffer. And I'm not sure if that's stored all on the bottom, all on the top, but most likely it's a bit on the bottom and a bit on the top. And that's just to protect the cars from users who leave them dead or full charge them every day. Now Ford uh, will probably let you set a charge limit in here. I have to go and check. And uh, I hope they do at least, so you don't have to full charge your Mustang every day. You just keep it to 80, 85%, whatever is best for the battery pack, you know, long-term storage somewhere in the middle around 40 or 50%. So the efficiency of the car is, is a big play. Now we've just received the EPA numbers of 300 miles of rated range on the extended range rear wheel drive car. The one we're driving here is 270 EPA. Now we're not gonna see that on a day like today. We're cruising on the highway. It's 44 degrees outside, it's wet ground. All of these add to resistance. You have to work the heater, you know, things like this. But uh, I will say we will have the car for an extended period of time to test soon where we can get all of the efficiency numbers in our 70 mile per hour highway range test. And of course, you'll see all of our charging data and testing coming up as well because 150 kilowatt peak charging is great. But what we don't know yet is the exact curve of the charging uh, cycle here. So what I'm really curious about is how long can it sustain that? How much does it slow you down above 80%? Um, we'll have to see. These are all big question marks. But today what we're learning is really just the, the driving experience, not so much the numbers and the nerdy stuff that I like to get into. It's just what's it like to get in the Mustang, put it in drive, and go down the street. And I gotta say, it's it's nice. Uh, the cabin is certainly quite airy, very spacious here, tons of room, and the car footprint is relatively small, and they've chosen to add a very big hood on here. This is a stylistic choice, of course, to have the Mustang bass back look, big long hood, big arches up there. And it is nice that we get a front trunk. But I'd say one of the detriments of just not having the cabin pushed all the way to the front, one of these really weird, you know, front overhang, BMW i3 looking things, I love the i3, I own one, uh, is, you know, that you don't have massive amounts of expansive dashboard cabin space. So I would say if Ford wanted to, they could have built a little bubble uh, that had tons of cabin space. But time it, you're sitting in the back. How does it feel back there? A lot of room. A lot of room, that's good to hear. Um, it's comfortable, it's enough space, definitely. Um, You're pretty tall as well. Yeah, and I don't feel claustrophobic at all. I think the, this, what is this called? The glass roof. The glass roof helps a lot. It's very, I mean, there's nothing, great road, road trip car, let's just say that. Great road trip car, yeah, yeah. in terms of comfort. We'll have to right. see about the efficiency and the charging, of course, we haven't tested that yet. But I would say, sitting here at 75 miles per hour, it's quiet. I'm comfortable. Uh, it's, suspension's great. Not sure, uh, uh, really, of, of a better solution for a, 
a, a sporty car that we could go rip up a canyon road with, like where we live in Colorado, we can go shred canyons in this car. You know it's got the chassis for it, uh, but also sit so easily and comfortably on the highway. It seems to have a split personality, which is nice. And the back seats, are they heated back there? Uh, not that I can see, I don't see any buttons. Uh, there is the USB-C and regular USB One charging. Each. Yes. So you have USB-A and C just like the front. Um, but I don't see any buttons besides the window and the door unlock. Okay, but you can unlock the doors from back there? Or not unlock the oh, handle. Oh, the door handle, I see. Okay, and those are the same door handles as the front, correct? Correct. Very cool. Yeah, the, the door handles are sort of a pull back. I showed it in the walk around, so make sure you're looking at that video and you'll know exactly what we're talking about. But kind of an interesting door handle design. Very intuitive to use, by the way. You would just look down and say, yep, that's, that's it right there. Now we're making a lane change. The car turns off the assistance features and it's going to turn it right back on when we're when we're in this lane. We get the bubble. We know exactly what the car is doing. Whenever the blue bubble is around, we know that we're in steering. Whenever the blue bubble is not there, we know it's just on adaptive cruise. I'd say really good color communication for the driver. We are going to test the efficiency of the Mustang Mach-E in a very unscientific, very un-inside EVs way. This is how normal people would do it. This is not the correct way. We are set at 70 miles per hour. We've, uh, 70 miles per hour is true GPS 70 miles per hour. I've already checked. We're gonna reset our trip calculation and we are going to cruise at 70 miles per hour in the Mustang Mach-E all-wheel drive. We will then look at where our energy is going. It has great representation here. It's cold out, so we're running the heater. It's 45 degrees outside right now. It is warming up, which is nice. Uh, and it is raining, the roads are wet. But we're gonna get an idea as to sort of almost worst case. You know, we're not talking Canadian minus 20 degrees winter, but we're talking a cold day in most US cities uh, with rain. This is about worst case scenario of highway range that you would get. So. Uh, we're gonna go from here to the Electrify America charging station and see what our miles per kilowatt hour consumption is. And I imagine it's gonna be much higher than we'll see at our 70 mile per hour test uh, because we'll try and find good weather for that. We'll do that sometime in the spring or summer. And we will also do that in a loop style test. You know, one of the downsides with testing efficiency on a road like this is we don't really know the elevation gain between here and our end destination. There's also wind direction to play around with and other traffic variables. So typically when I do our 70 mile per hour test, always with our 70 mile per hour, but typically when I do efficiency tests, I always make sure to have the same start and end point. So if we have headwinds going one way, we get tailwinds on the way back. And if we have elevation increase on one way, we have elevation decrease the other way and it should balance out. It's never perfect, but that's the best way we can control variables. But here we are cruising along. We can see 32% of our energy is going to climate, 58% of our route, I imagine that's our driving, 5% accessories, and 5% of uh, input, basically temperature variation from external temperature. Now, I can imagine that the 5% for external temperature here on this screen is accounting for the climate control use. It's probably saying because the battery is cold and it's cold outside, you have less available usable energy in the battery pack and that's where that 5% is going. This is just a guess. Comment down below if you know more than I do. You know, I have to talk about the road presence of the Mustang Mach-E, and I specifically asked for this grabber blue color, color for our drive today because it, it pops, and this is such an interesting car to me. And, you know, we were in downtown Detroit earlier today where we started this drive. We were getting pictures of it around the city, and, uh, you know, it, so much about the car, or any car, is about the vibe that it gives off. It's about the overall experience. Is it special? Is it for an enthusiast? Does it bring joy to other people? Or is it pretentious? And this car uh, appealed to everyone on the street. First off, there was not one person walking down the street of Detroit that did not head turn, look at the car the whole way around, and, and really was just like fixated on this thing. Now you're seeing a bright grabber blue Mustang Mach-E drive by, you know, that's interesting. But we're in, you know, the heart of American transportation right here in Detroit. This is Motor City. It's home of V8. You know, this is, this is, is it sacrilege to normal people to have an electric Mustang? And of course you see the comments online, you know, a Mustang should be, you know, V8, rear wheel drive, manual transmission only. Uh, but I think Mustang is more, and, and I agree, Mustang should be that, and I hope that never goes away because I'm a huge fan of Mustang. But I also think Mustang stands for more than just your 
you know, big power, big noise. And this certainly has big power, but this is like your grown-ups Mustang. You, you, you know, you can put the family in this, you can put your bikes on the back, you can put your bikes in it and go everywhere. So what, what was the general perception of, of people on the streets? Because I still, you know, we live in the automotive circles where this is a hot debate, but, but what does your average person think? And everyone was smiling. Everyone was pleased. We met people walking down the street. They're like, this is the new electric Mustang. Oh, this is so cool. Um, you know, it doesn't matter what shape or size the person came in. They, this appealed to them. This is a very classless vehicle. It has a little bit of, uh, you know, I always say this about the Volkswagen GTI. Everyone said it for years. You know, you could have the Queen of England in one. She looked totally at, at home in it. Or you could have, uh, you know, just just me driving it as some kid driving a, a GTI, and it, and it works. This is much the same. I could see a businessman driving this car. He'd look right at home. I could see Timon driving it. Timon drives a Focus RS right now, shredding around the roads in one of these things. It, it appeals to everyone, and it really appeals to me. And, and it mostly stems from the capability of the car, from the driving dynamics, from that power on oversteer that you get even with the all wheel drive, from the steering turn in and sharpness is, is a huge standout. And all of these things make a Mustang good. And now you can just bring more friends along for the ride. So am I okay with it being called a Mustang for the first time on camera? Yes, I am okay. It, it does two things for me. One, it shows Ford that it, they are so passionate about uh, electrification that they're willing to put the most iconic brand name they have. You know, they really have Mustang, Bronco, F-150, and they're willing to make it electric. We're also seeing them do F-150 electric, uh, battery electric vehicle coming soon uh, for, for F-150, and now we have a hybrid one already going. So there's a big commitment from Ford to go electric. And hopefully we'll see either an electric Bronco or a plug-in hybrid. But it's just great to see their first effort uh, basically go out there with a push. This is not a compliance car. This is a true full team, full effort, best they could do. And they made a really, really cool offering here. So we're still continuing along at 70 miles per hour. I'll let you know the efficiency numbers when we arrive here in just a couple minutes. Actually, we're getting off the highway now, so in, in 0.6 miles, so I'll just let you know now. So I'm going to pull it up. We've done 11.2 miles at 70 miles per hour. And uh, again, I, I, I felt like we gained a little bit of elevation. Again, the, the, I don't know the wind. I hadn't checked, but this is a very preliminary number. Just take this with a grain of salt, but 2.1 miles per kilowatt hour on this particular stretch, uh, which is quite high consumption, I would say. You know, that's 480 watt hour per mile, something like this. And... Uh, yeah, but it's it's cold and not to make excuses for the car. I'm not here to do that at all I'm just saying, you know, take that with a grain of salt. That's worst case scenario and it's not uncommon to have other SUVs uh, Maybe a little bit bigger than this have those consumption numbers But we'll see how that actually plays out when we can do our instrumented testing in a loop style format If we get those numbers then maybe not the best, but if we don't then I think we'll be okay it feels you know, like we were talking to the team, they really put a lot of effort into making this car as efficient as they possibly could. And our final impressions as we're making our turn into our charging station here, we're gonna do some charging tests, run the battery down, stay tuned on the channel for all of this, uh, is this car drives really well. Uh, you know, I really wish we could have had it out on track. We'll do that at some point, but our first impressions of how most people will be driving this car around the city, highway commuting, is a sense of quality, these material choices are really nice all around, especially love this this dashboard material here, this sort of uh, fabric. Uh, it's a nice fabric. It has the, the Bang & Olufsen logos on it, so it must have to do with the sound system. And uh, the overall sereneness, like this car, the pedal mapping is really great. The one pedal driving I absolutely love. It's needed on all electric cars. I always say this. Uh, but the fact that you never have to touch the brake pedal is just so great. If you're coming from a Ford Escape or another uh, internal combustion powered vehicle and get in this, this is going to be the most impressive experience that you've ever had. Uh, really, I mean this. So it's uh, it's a lot better than uh, any internal combustion uh, compact SUV, I would say. And it's going to be right up there with some of the best electric crossovers. And the only way to find out is it actually better or not is we'll have to put them head to head. So uh, we will do that at some point, I hope. 
Uh, so stay tuned. I'd love to do the electric crossover battle of 2021. So many hot cars coming out these days. And uh, we'll just have to see. But I would say if you look at the Mustang Mach-E alone, uh, this is one of the best cars I have driven. I'm unbelievably impressed. I came into it with high expectations. You know, Ford's really done a big uh, push to show, you know, at least on paper that this car is great, but we don't drive cars on paper. We drive cars on the street and on the street, it's even more impressive than driving it or at least reading about it on paper as that guy makes a left on a red light. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching and we will see you on the next episode.